up, everybody? I am gonna do the thing right now. Do, do, do. Okay, walk in warrior. It's been a while, guys. I'm sorry I've been gone for so long. I've had a hard time getting the time of day, not to paint, but to paint uninterrupted so that I can stream. I apologize for that. I'm working on it. I missed you guys. Let's get into this thing. Um, black text, blue and green background. Walk in warrior tattoo. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Some urban style font. Walk in warrior. That'll be good. In warrior and then tattoo underneath it hello everybody <laughs> how often do I clean out my brushes always a question um, I don't clean out my brushes they just sit there like they are right now and they've been sitting there for years um, every now and then I got to clean something out because something gets clogged in there or paint dries in there or something but on a normal basis I don't clean them out where'd my music go play the next song please there it goes um, but yeah, I just, I just kind of, they stay, they stay, they stay sealed up so the paint doesn't dry typically. So I don't really need to clean them off. T-A-T-T-O. favorite thing I have done. I really like just regular graffiti letters and the more freedom I have with them to kind of make them my own style, the more I enjoy them. This kind of lettering is good too. Um, really any kind of lettering. I like letters. I would like to be better at characters and stuff. But uh, as it stands, I'm not real great at characters. Alright, drop shadow up here too. Random question, but do I swear? I don't. I, I really don't. Um, I don't find any enjoyment from it. Um, I feel like swearing is, I mean, whatever, but um, if you can make the words that you say mean a lot and have an impact without using strong words, then uh, that, that speaks to the value of what you have to say more than just being loud about what you have to say. I have the philosophy that um, you want to be able to be, you want people to, to listen to what you have to say. And if you use language that offends people, then you're limiting your audience. So, for better or worse, some people don't like to hear that language and will stop listening to you immediately, maybe even subconsciously, as soon as you start talking and using swear words. So, in order to maximize the value of your speech, you should speak in a way that people will listen and understand you. I also like to keep a cool and calm and collected attitude. Really, what doesn't get it clogged? Um, keeping everything clean is what doesn't get it clogged. Keeping everything sealed up. Um, it doesn't really matter what kind of paint you use. I don't know. 
when I first started airbrushing, I did have a lot of problems with clogging, like everybody does. Um, always just cleaning airbrushes and messing with stuff and fixing stuff. But the more experience I have airbrushing, just the less problems I get with it. It seems like I don't have the problems that I used to have. And I think it's just because I, I take care of everything and keep things clean. I don't know. Do one with different colors. Right now I'm doing orders. I'm doing, uh, these are paid shirts. I'm just doing my commission work. Um, and chatting with you guys while I do it. So I'm, I'm gonna do what they requested. We got a blue and green background here. I woke up to like 2,000 more followers on Instagram today, which was a surprise to me and it's cool. Um, Unilad posted something about me on their Instagram and woo, it was a cool thing. I've gotten more visitors to my website today than any other day ever and that was true at like 10 o'clock this morning. So. I'm excited. I'm also hopefully not going to get super booked up with orders all of a sudden. We'll see. Alright. You're welcome, Andre. Easy airbrush is here. What's up, man? Alright, this one is pink and blue. finally got around to paying for it this year so I was like oh man I forgot about this order and here it is so I've got a tedious day ahead of me I'm a hacker I got an aimbot man take a picture before I forget. <laughs> you should get up an airbrush. Oh, look at my little boy, guys. Oh. Um, this is what I'm looking for. I haven't been taking pictures. What is my favorite airbrush? Um... The new airbrush that I got is the No Name Airbrush by Spray Gunner. There's a link in the description to it. It's a starter kit that I put together with Spray Gunner. Um, that is my favorite airbrush. I also really like the Omni 3000s by Badger. They're both, they're very comparable. Um, as long as it's a siphon fed airbrush, that's dual action and good quality, it's gonna be fine. Um, the Vega 2000s back in the day were really good. One more of these. This one's a, a script style. Oh, 
walking warrior in a small font on top of a giant tattoo beneath it. Okay, here we go. Walk-in warrior tattoo. T-O-O. It's not complete without a drop shadow. You know the rules. You've been here long enough. Alright, blue and pink background, cool. Just a simple circle background with some stars. Painting perfect circles like it's my day job. Oh wait, that is my day job. Do you have to wear a mask while airbrushing? No. Um, airbrushing is not like spray painting where it does a bunch of stuff in the air. It pretty much all stays on the shirt and I've got ventilation that sucks up all the extra. I've tested it. I've worn a mask all day long to see if like anything got caught on the mask or collected in the mask and there's nothing. If I spray paint without a mask, at the end of the day, I'll have whatever color boogers I was painting with. If I airbrush all day without a mask, regular colored boogers. Good to go. Okay, thanks Don. Don says I can start now. He has arrived. The party has now begun. Now that Don's here, we can start the real show, which is gonna be the airbrushed hats today. like it's oh, it's too low. Hi. This one is gonna be fun. We got a rainbow. Love is love, okay. Um, script text.
adjust my camera a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna start with pink. Darn Skippy. Okay. On the top, we got some pink. So airbrush rainbows are very easy, but if you do them wrong, or I guess they're easy if you do them right is what I'll say. And then I won't elaborate at all. <laughs> You don't use the same amount of every color. I used a lot of yellow, I used a lot of blue, and I'm gonna use a little tiny bit of green between them. And the colors are a little different on camera, as they always are. Transparent for mixing colors? Yes, everything, all my colors are transparent except for black and white. Hold on, I gotta get an M&M. &M. Love is love. This episode is sponsored by M&M's. Hmm. Shadow. I don't want to do a dark drop shadow. I got to keep it really, really light. Starburst. I'm gonna do them in white. White Starburst works pretty cool. And they specifically asked for some white highlights on the letters, so I'm gonna do that.
Twice baked 420 on a purple background. This is going to be tricky because it's kind of a lot of text on one line. Twice baked as one word. It'll be alright. Let's do it. Scripts text T W I C E B A K E D. 420 is going to be underneath it. So I need to leave room for that. I always have a little bit of trouble with numbers. I'm not like math. I'm good at math. I'm not... Painting numbers is harder than painting letters. Because numbers don't flow as well as, as shapes. Right? You don't have handwriting on numbers. It's kind of a... I always say the same thing. They don't... Script letters flow together. Other letters can flow together. But numbers seem to have like... They don't follow the same visual rules. So they don't... They don't work well together. Also, there's a lot more difficult shapes with numbers. Like an eight has a lot of intersections. And sixes and nines are awkward shapes that are not balanced, like a B. I don't like Bs. I'm just complaining. That's how I do. Black Starburst were an inter interesting decision. Thank you, Mark. Um, I've been airbrushing for 12 years now. Pretty much full time. Pretty much every day. Um, it's been my only job. It's been my full time job since I was 17 years old. And I built a business out of it myself. And it's just, it's, I've probably painted 50,000 t shirts in my life. Still learning, still improving. Um, I wouldn't really say I'm improving anymore as far as like airbrush control. I've got control. I don't think that's really improving anymore. Um, what I'm improving at now is just style, lettering style, um, graffiti styles. I'm starting to be able to bring other styles of artwork into my work a little bit. Um, what I could do is start branching out into other forms of airbrushing, doing like automotive work and stuff, which I haven't done a lot of. That's something that I, I could be working on if I wasn't busy with the t-shirt thing. Uh, I know very little about air automotive work. I think that'll be fine. Twice baked purples. Done. Next one, another rainbow. Actually, it's not a rainbow. It's just pink and blue. And turquoise. Just blue. There's pink. Was having your mall shop a good business decision? It was a good business decision. It was necessary for my business to exist. Um, Apparently you know a little bit about my my history. I started at the theme park, seasonal job, season ended, I needed a job. Uh, so I started a shop at a mall with my last pennies and had a mall shop airbrushing t-shirts for a little while and it was no fun at all. Oh wait, purple turquoise. That changes things. Um 
it was necessary. I needed that business. I, what my goal was to build a website and to have a, an online store where I took orders, but I couldn't immediately do that. Websites take time to uh, to grow, to build. It's not just building the website. You have to build the social, the search engine optimization side of it. You have to grow the marketing and all that, and that takes months to start showing up on Google search results usually. Um, so I started the mall shop and needed it. I needed that income. And then as soon as the website was big enough, I kind of started, I didn't kind of start, I completely shut down the mall shop and just did online stuff. I wouldn't have had money to pay my bills if I didn't open the mall shop. But other than that, it didn't result in anything for me. Um, I got more practice when I was at the theme park and the mall shop was way more work than it was worth. I would never do it again. I would never in my life open up another shop that I have to be at full time. Unless like everything in the world breaks down and I have to because it's all my computer. Um, yeah, but a mall shop is definitely a great step in the right direction because in the downtime that you're gonna have at a mall shop, you can start building a website or you can practice or you can do other things or whatever. But I had to be there every single day, seven days a week, all day long, always. Um, my day off was Sunday because the mall closed at three o'clock. I still had to be there until three o'clock. There was no breaks. I slept in the back of the mall in a sleeping bag on the floor with cockroaches. <laughs> it, was, it was a bad time. But it was necessary. All right, Olivia, O-L-I-V-I-A. picture of this and turn it into a design for the website because I don't have a lot of hat designs on the website right now and I always do the same one it's always this rainbow one should have left it alone and not added this white but I did Try to make airbrushing a career, like you said. Um, start an Etsy shop and do that right now. Go open up an Etsy shop immediately, assuming that you know how to airbrush already. Go take a picture of something that you painted and make a listing out of it, and just start start the Etsy shop. Um, later, you can build your own website if you want to or whatever. But Etsy, you can have up in a couple minutes. And then you can point to it from social media and everywhere else until you get a more professional website. Thank you, sir. Next 
one. Twice picked for 20. In a graffiti style. This one's gonna be tricky. I'm gonna need some M&Ms for this. letters but in a graffiti style a big blocky graffiti style Just dive in. I have money for the shop, I don't have kids, it's the fact that it's business. I'm with you. You're talking about opening a shop and um, dealing with customers in person. That was that was the hardest part of it. Even besides having to like sleep in the back and not have any freedom. The customers that I had to deal with when I was in the shop They weren't my favorite type of people. Rude, arrogant type of people that uh, like to spend a whole lot of money on shoes and then try to jip me on a $20 t-shirt. I had to kick many people out of my store. I yelled at more people those two years of my life than any other years of my life. And I stopped trusting people entirely uh, during that time. They just weren't good people. They almost made me give up on everything just because I thought that that was going to be the customer base that I had forever, even online. And I did not like them. Being a little white boy in the shop didn't help either. I got no respect. 
Unless I was actively painting and they knew I was the artist, then they were impressed by the work. Unless I was actually painting, I got no respect and I got told to go get my manager all the time, being the owner of the shop. Um, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. But it worked out. I was good friends with security back then. It's gonna look a lot better. These lines are gonna go away. Do you have any tips for you for consistency? Consistency of what exactly? I mean, in general, consistency comes from practice, but. Yeah, give me a little more context, I'll help you out. sharpness um, I always say that your lettering skill is separate from your airbrushing skill so if you want to have consistent lettering you need to have an alphabet in your head that you can go to you always kind of know what your letters are going to look like you should be able to deviate from that and whatnot as well but if you have a library of letters in your head that you can go to um, then they're going to be consistent on your your shirt or your surface or whatever. And the only way to build that up is to practice. And you don't necessarily have to practice that with an airbrush. You can practice that on paper, pencil, or whatever. But when I find people that are experienced artists, um, they're much quicker to pick up airbrushing than people that aren't artists already. Um, you kind of can start airbrushing what you already know, which might be a little library of letters that you already have in your head. And then you can focus on the physical aspect of controlling the airbrush separately from the artistic aspect of creating artwork. Um, it helps you kind of break things down into simpler tasks. So, practice your lettering on paper until you're super comfortable. My boy came out. Nap time is over. Hey, Nose. I'm painting, buddy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can go. Sure, buddy. He's gonna go swing on his swing set. He's swinging. <laughs> Might not a uh, probably shouldn't have done these white out highlights, but I did so. Artists, so 
sharpness and cleanliness. Sharpness, yeah, okay, that's the other thing. I knew it was, there was something else I wanted to talk about. Sharpness, that does just take a whole lot of physical practice. You want to get super, super close to the shirt. Um, my needle is like a millimeter away. Like, I regularly snag, well, I used to a lot more, snag the needle on the surface. You want to be close enough that the spray pattern isn't a big wide fan. It's actually still a really, really narrow point. Uh, so, if you want to do big lettering really clean, you have to get close to the shirt and move quickly. That's how you get a nice crisp line. And really just takes that muscle memory to be able to do that quickly and precisely. It's, it's difficult. Who's the kid? It's my kid. He's almost three years old. Mm. This is some of his artwork. He's a natural. Done. Done with those. I don't really have anything else to paint right now. I'm gonna paint one thing on a piece of paper for you guys, and then I'm going to uh, jump off here. I'm starting on black shirts with white paint. That is the hardest thing to paint. That is not where I would start. White paint is the hardest paint to use, and black shirts are the hardest shirts to paint. Uh, so, if you are starting in hard mode, I would not do that. I would start on a white shirt with black paint, so it's your easiest combination. And I guess, let me just go through some, some tips. Yeah, I have an Instagram, it's in the, the, it's in the thing. You can search daily airbrush guy. So if you're getting started airbrushing now, the first thing you want to do is, this is an airbrush, push down for air, pull back for paint. You can push down without getting paint. Once you start pulling back is when you start getting paint. I don't know why I did that on my hand instead of the paper. Um, to start and stop your lines, you want to use the trigger motion forward and backwards, not let go of the trigger. What I mean by that is I'm holding down the air the whole time, I'm painting, I'm stopping painting, but the air is still on. That is for cleanliness. If I let go of the air entirely when I stopped, then when I start again, you get this splatter of paint. And you're gonna get that every time that you start painting and that's gonna give you, uh, you don't want that. That'll give you a bad time. So uh, don't do that. Keep the air down while you're painting. And usually I have to tell people that about 500 times. Keep the air on, keep the air on. Tell yourself that, keep the air on. And once you, first thing you want to do when you grab an airbrush and start practicing is just figure out it's like learning the clutch in a in a manual car you want to figure out where paint starts coming out and get used to just pulling back this trigger just a little tiny bit All right and make these dots at first your dots are going to look like this and they're going to be gross and all all over the place um but get perpendicular to the item and pull back just a little tiny bit, or really close to the surface. I'm using my finger like this as a buffer to like help me have some control, and my finger kind of slides and glides around the shirt. That's why I always have paint right there, because when I'm painting my hands like this, and it gives me a good depth meter, basically. But make these dots, learn some lines, and then you want to start making lines that start and stop. The air is still down. Keep the air on when you're painting the whole time. And just start getting used to where the trigger starts and stops. How often do they run out? The cans, I mean, two ounces of paint will last me 20 shirts. <laughs> um, so, once you have lines down, once you're starting to get familiar with where the trigger starts and stops, you wanna start doing what's called dagger strokes. And that is, Every stroke ends in a taper, like this. It's a little pointy thing that we call a dagger in the airbrush world. And you do that by pushing forward with the trigger, of course, 
but also getting closer to the shirt as you end your line. So that everything ends in this nice dagger stroke. And if you can do that, then you have the basis for everything else that you paint. All of your lettering is dagger strokes. Every line that I paint is a dagger stroke, essentially. Because I don't just let go of the airbrush, I always taper it out. So, oops. Good practice after that is to do these loops and dagger strokes. You're looking for parallel lines and consistency, and you want to vary the width of your line by them go really slowly. When you're doing lettering, the, the common rule is thin up, thick down, right? Yeah, thin up, thick down. So you want to go thin up and thick down. And that, that translates into lettering. But you're varying the line width in one stroke. Once you can do this, you win and you can do whatever you want to with an airbrush. Right, and you can practice drop shadowing that by doing the same thing lightly. I don't know, there's a million drills you can do, but the, the basis is you want to have really good control over this trigger. So, so practice a lot. I mean, you probably spend 20 hours just doing dots and lines and stuff. Doing whatever kind of shapes you want to. I don't know. Speaking of dagger strokes, do you have any advice for a splash of paint that spikes out at the end of your stroke? For a splash of paint that spits out. You mean you're having like a, a thing that happens? That sounds like you have a dirty uh, cone in your airbrush. And when the needle pushes back and meets the front of your cone, it's letting out old paint or something. Um, sounds like you need to clean your airbrush if that's happening. You can do some drips. Everything is built out of dagger strokes. I don't know. Feels like kind of the next thing you do. This isn't a spray can. You don't do your fills like this. You do your fills with dagger strokes too. Um, big, soft dagger strokes. Send you a pic. Okay, I will let you know. But yeah, practice and stuff. First thing you do, get those dots. And then start connecting those dots with dagger strokes. And then maybe start filling those strokes with a gradient. And that's like two days worth of practice. Is it edible? No, this is acrylic paint. <laughs> I have, seems like I can't get all the paint out of the, no, okay. Well, cleaning your airbrush is a harder thing. When you shut off the paint, but I keep the air on like you're supposed to, that means that your needle isn't flush with the front of the cone. The needle is a point and the cone is a circle. So the needle pushes forward all the way to the cone and the needle creates a seal with that cone. If paint is still coming out, then either that needle isn't creating a seal, or your cone has a crack in it so the paint's still leaking out. It's that's the only thing that can be wrong. Can I draw? I guess. I mean, can I draw what? Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get off of here because I have other stuff to do. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you learned something. And I will make a video that's like how to airbrush and go through these steps in a much more structured way, much more intelligent way, and we'll get you guys all up to speed on airbrushing if you want to. And of course, you can always ask questions in live streams, but uh, I'm gonna do that. For now, I'm gonna go. Thank you guys, and I will see you later on. Goodbye. <laughs>